Metropolis might just be the most influential science fiction movie of all time. A movie that set the standard and paved the way for many other science fiction movies that followed. A movie that inspired many filmmakers and other artists, some of whom might even be your favourites. But Metropolis is more than just a movie, it's more like a surreal experience. A movie of beautiful, intriguing and even terrifying visuals. Made in 1927, this silent movie of science fiction and German expressionism was the vision of filmmaker Fritz Lang, as it tells the haunting story of a futuristic city, which is inhabited by rich people who enjoy a life of luxury, where the city is operated by its underground lower-class slaves, who are treated as mere mechanical parts, who are forced to give their lives up to slave labor so the rich can enjoy their luxuries above ground. One day, Freda, who is the son of the master of Metropolis, sees the workers slaying away underground at a big machine, where he then hallucinates and sees the machine as a terrifying monster, with the slaves being devoured by it, where he starts to realize the true nature of his father's city. Also living in the underground world is a woman called Maria, who tries to spread hope and inspiration to the slave workers, along with the city's underground children. Meanwhile, a scientist in the underground world of Metropolis has invented a robot in order to resurrect his long-lost love. However, Maria is kidnapped, so the robot can take on her guise, so she can manipulate those who look up to her and cause chaos and destruction in the city, where Freda must stop this evil duplicate and help Maria to bring the slaves and upper-class residents of Metropolis together. So welcome to my New Year's Day episode. So, seeing how we're now in the 20s, I thought I'd go back and look into a movie from the 1920s as we look into Metropolis. A movie of which, despite the fact is nearly 100 years old, still actually looks really timeless and visually stunning. So let's look into 10 things that you didn't know about Metropolis. A movie that is probably, without a doubt, the quiz essential science fiction movie. Let's check it out. Number 10, it started with a book. As mentioned, Metropolis was directed by Austrian-German filmmaker Fritz Lang, who was a pioneer of the silent cinema era. However, Metropolis was a joint effort between Fritz and his wife, Via von Haber, as they both came up with the story and concepts. In fact, Fia wrote a novel for Metropolis which actually came out before the movie did, with it being published in 1925, two years before the movie. The book was designed to be part of the movie's marketing and merchandise, to sort of entice people into the movie and get them excited for it. When it came to the story, Fritz and Thea took inspiration from other great writers, such as H.G. Wells and Mary Shelley. What's interesting about the book is that the book features themes that were not featured in the movie, themes of magic, witchcraft and the occult, with the movie feeling more technical and the book feeling more supernatural. However, there were some occult hints in the movie, but just weren't really explored, such as the five-pointed star which sits above the chair that powers the robot. Number 9, it was a tough shoot. Fritz Lang was a perfectionist of his craft and had an eye for everything looking just right in order to create his vision. So much so that making Metropolis was very tough on the crew and particularly the cast who were working on the film. He demanded constant retakes and reshoots till the actors would collapse from exhaustion. Bridget Helm, who played Maria and the robot counterpart, would go on to call the shoot an incredible strain, with the filming of the movie testing everyone's nerves. For example, real fire was used in a scene where her character was to be burned to a stake, to which her dress actually caught on fire. Due to all the constant retakes and reshoots, even the simplest of scenes could take days to shoot. This proved problematic, particularly with the flooding scene, which was filmed with up to 500 children extras who were plucked for filming from the poorest parts of Berlin, of which the flooding shoot took 14 days to film, and Lang insisted on keeping the water cold, meaning for 14 days straight, the actors were in a pool of freezing cold water. Damn, that's tough. Not to mention the fact that the movie took about a year to shoot with filming lasting about 17 months. 
Number eight, Metropolis was the most expensive movie made for its time. Metropolis's budget was originally 1.5 million Reich marks, but as the production went on, the budget drastically rose to 5 million, which giving inflation, by today's standards, was the equivalent of 16 million American dollars. Which was just insane numbers for 1927. Movies back then just didn't have that kind of money thrown at them. In the silent era, movies were kind of an extension of stage plays, but high costs were required on the account of the large sets used and the large number of extras that were required. And the thing is, since then, movies have become known for having hundreds to millions of dollars thrown into their productions. So Metropolis, among other things, kind of set that precedent. Number seven, a cast of extras. The amount of extras used for Metropolis is also insane, something that's become a cinematic legend. At the time, the movie's production publicly declared that the movie used up to 36,000 extras, with there being a requirement of 25,000 men, 11,000 women, 1,100 bald men, 750 children, 100 people of color, and 25 people of Asian ethnicity. When watching the movie, it's clear that the movie did indeed use a vast number of extras in order to make the world of Metropolis feel fully alive. However, the numbers might just be an urban legend, as director Fritz Lang debunked this claim in a 1971 interview, claiming that the amount of extras were never that high, but were more around the 250 to 300 mark. Who knows, maybe the amount of extras used for Metropolis were exaggerated by the production in 1927 to make the movie sound big and spectacular. Number six, the robot costume was torture. The robot scene in Metropolis is one of the first robots to be used in cinema. In the movie, this mechanical being is simply known as Machine Person, and even by today's standards, its design is quite captivating. However, wearing the robot costume was anything but captivating, but more of a nightmare. Yeah, long before C-3PO in Star Wars, Bridget Helm, who had to perform in the suit, was already suffering the effects of having to wear an uncomfortable robot suit in the name of entertainment. In order to create the suit, a body cast was made of Helm, and the material that was used is called plastic wood, which was designed to be a wood filler material, and was chosen as the material could be made to look metallic, while also giving Helm more movement ability. However, Helm would often get cuts and bruises from wearing the suit, as well as suffering from exhaustion, dehydration, and would even often run out of air while wearing it. So yeah, the suit was literally deadly. So, basically, it was a movie costume that tore you up and stopped you from breathing. Yeah, this really makes me appreciate Helm's efforts in the movie even more now. Number 5. Alternative Ending There was an alternative ending considered for Metropolis, which would have seen the Freda character leave the city to take off into space, where he was going to live among the stars and embark on space exploration. I guess the ending was symbolic of Freda escaping the clutches of his father by leaving his father's legacy that would have awaited him, aka the city of Metropolis. However, I do prefer the ending that we actually got, as it's nobler seeing Freda and Maria staying to help the underground children of the city. Although the ending wasn't used, it became the basis for a movie director Fritz Lang would go on to make a few years later, that movie being Woman on the Moon, which came out in 1929. Number four, confusion over the movie setting. Okay, so one big question which often plagues viewers is what year exactly does Metropolis take place in? Is it even on Earth? If so, what city is this meant to be? Well, depending on which version that has been released through many different languages and cuts, there have been several explanations as to the time Metropolis is set in. Some cuts have suggested that the movie takes place in the year 2000. Paramount Pictures' US release states that the movie takes place in the year 3000. However, the most popular belief is that the movie is set in the year 2026. After all, that's the year that's been associated with the movie over the years. However, in the movie's original release, a year was never specified. So will we ever know the true time and location of Metropolis? 
Well, yeah, but the answer lies in the novelization, which, as mentioned, was written by Fritz's wife, based on a story they both created, in which it states that Metropolis does not take place in any particular time or setting, neither the past or future. AKA, it's just a mere fantasy, and that's all you really need to know. Is it just me, or does that description kind of sound similar to the whole a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away prologue in Star Wars? Both explanations are suggesting that this story is not of our realm. Number 3. Bizarre US Version So as mentioned, Paramount Pictures handled the US release of Metropolis, and it seems that the company had big issues with the original story, so a playwright was hired to rewrite the film, with new dialogue cards making the story of Metropolis entirely different in the US, with the footage of the film being worked around this new version. In the US version, it wasn't the rich people living in the high-rise city which caused the slavery and turmoil of the underground workers, but rather the underground workers themselves were seen as the villains, who are seen as greedy, and some of them even seen as, quote, soulless robots, who start running amok with the city's underground mechanics, with the slave workers being less sympathetic and more soulless and manipulative. Metropolis's director Fritz Lang was so outraged with these changes to his film, of which was basically an entirely different story, which just used footage that he had filmed, he refused to even watch the Paramount Pictures US cut. Number 2. H.G. Wells wasn't a fan As mentioned, one of the inspirations for Metropolis was H.G. Wells, who was a remarkable science fiction writer of his time, and still is with him writing many classics such as War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man and The Time Machine among many others. However, something that may have been a shock to Fritz and his wife Thea is that H.G. Wells did not like Metropolis, with the author labelling it as the silliest film he's ever seen. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. In fact, despite becoming one of the most influential films of all time, and a template for cinema in general, for its time a lot of people actually really didn't like Metropolis. We now all know about blockbuster movies. Those big movies of scope and scale, designed to thrill movie audiences. Well, it kind of started with Metropolis, as when you watch it, it has the DNA, so to speak, of what would become a blockbuster movie. Critics panned the movie, claiming that although the movie is visually stunning, it's cold and soulless. I think that Metropolis represents a shift in cinema, that movies were now going to be bigger and grander, epic tales of scope and scale, and I think that people just didn't know what to make of this approach at the time, and thus they didn't like it it represented a new dawn of motion art. In other words, if Metropolis came out today, it would be given a rotten rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Just take a moment to let that sink in. Number 1. Missing Scenes Ever since Metropolis' release, the movie has been chopped up and has had many scenes taken out, many of which had remained missing for decades, with the movie spending 80-odd years as an incomplete film. So how did this happen? How did the movie get so butchered with many of its scenes erased from history? Well, it's simply because of the movie's original running time, which consisted of 153 minutes. Theatres didn't really like showing the movie on the account of its length, so when the movie was shipped overseas, it was decided to cut huge chunks of the movie out. Initially, the UK and US versions were given 115 minutes of footage, followed by a re-release in 1936, which was just a mere 91 minutes. However, as the years went by, Metropolis was being viewed more and more as a masterpiece, a landmark in cinema, so naturally the lost cut scenes were being sought after. To which, over the years, the odd scene would be discovered here and there, till finally the ultimate Metropolis discovery was made in 2008, when an entire original cut of Metropolis was discovered in Buenos Aires. However, the print was not in the best of condition, and the movie was still not entirely complete, as due to damage, several minutes of the movie were unwatchable. However, a restoration of the complete film took place in 2010, with those few unwatchable minutes being replaced with title cards. So as of now, we are closer than ever to seeing the entire original vision of Metropolis in all its glory. 
I can understand that audiences who are more accustomed to modern cinema may not like Metropolis. After all, it has no spoken dialogue and is in black and white on a smaller ratio. However, all lovers of cinema should definitely check it out. It's a landmark in the creation of what cinema has become. The first piece of the jigsaw puzzle, if you will. And it is, without a doubt, a masterpiece. I tend to find it more of an experience than a movie, and I think that's the best way to go into it if you're brand new to Metropolis. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, the mediator between the head and the hands must be the heart. See ya!